So thank you again for inviting me. My name is Sibel Altikulaj, and together with uh, Tima Janssen, Smitty Nieuwenhuis, and Nienke van Atteveld, we are currently um, doing pretty cool <laughs> research <laughs> um, about mindset profiles uh, in high school students. Um, and we are still in the middle of the process of analyzing the data. So you will get very preliminary results, but um, I will show it, show it to you anyway. Um, so our statement is that mindset is more complex than growth or fixed. Um, and I will just uh, take you through our journey. Um, so you may have heard that children have either a growth mindset or a fixed mindset and um, that that is important to know for their uh, academic achievement. So what we want to know is why, uh, um, yeah, why it's thought that mindset influenced their students' achievement and if that's correct. So the literature states that students' uh, mindset can influence uh, their uh, goal orientation, their beliefs about effort and their uh, intrinsic or extrinsic motivation. And in turn, um, that will influence their academic achievement. So teachers usually focus on getting their students to uh, get a growth mindset because that will lead to better academic achievement. Um, however, when we look at the uh, literature, many student uh, studies cannot replicate these findings or have like there are many inconsistencies. Um, so we think that the full picture is more complex than just a growth or a fixed mindset. So let's dive in. So as you can see here, um, there are two students or two groups of students um, that are um, achieving at the same level in primary school until uh, 12 years old. However, after uh, getting to secondary school, uh, they differ in their school results. And what is thought um, and said in the literature is that mindset plays a key role in this differentiation. So what is mindset? Mindset is students' implicit beliefs about the malleability of their intelligence. And it's thought to be uh, on a continuum. So on one side, a fixed mindset, and on the other side, a growth mindset. And everything in between um, is possible. However, the literature uses and understands mindset usually in a simplified way, just the growth and a fixed mindset. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, is that mindset influence uh, academic achievement through other constructs. So when we look at uh, the growth and a fixed mindset, um, we see that growth mindset is related to adopting mastery goals. So wanting, wanting to learn the content um, to positive effort beliefs. So uh, yeah, positive beliefs about, uh, yeah, do working hard or putting effort into learning and to autonomous motivation. And that's more an intrinsic form of motivation. And when we look at the fixed mindset, um, that is related to performance goals. So prove that you can uh, do something or get high grades, negative effort beliefs. Um, yeah, so believing that effort is something bad and you don't want to uh, do more or put more effort into it and controlled motivation. So that's more uh, an extrinsic form of motivation. Um, and these factors then influence a student's academic achievement. Um, however, the associations between these constructs are not that clear cut as uh, we can see by many inconsistencies in the literature. Um, so mindset and all these related constructs might be more complex. So for now, um, I want to 
talk more about the inconsistencies in the literature. Um, and I will dive into uh, three uh, main inconsistencies we find, and that are, that are the effects of mindset on goal orientation, the effects of mindset on academic achievement, and uh, inconsistencies in mindset interventions. So first, the effect of mindset on goal orientation. What we see is that there is little support for the effect of mindset on goal orientation uh, in some studies. And in this particular study, they do find little support for a growth mindset um, that is related to uh, mastery goals and a fixed mindset that is related to performance goals. However, these results are significantly uh, quite weak. So it's, it's not that clear cut. Um, furthermore, it's always said and thought that you have to have a growth mindset in order to achieve better at school, um, to intrinsically want to learn or yeah, to have this mastery goal, uh, goal orientation. Um, however, there are stu uh, studies that show that adopting both mastery uh, goals and performance goals may even increase students' academic achievement. And there is even a study which shows that fixed mindset students can outperform growth mindset students. So it's not that, that clear whether adopting the right uh, goal orientation um, is beneficial for the academic achievement. When we look at the effect of mindset on academic achievement, um, we see a very weak association between growth mindset and academic achievement. And this is found in a meta-analysis. Um, also in a study in which uh, 10 to 12 year old children were tested, there were even no effects of mindset on academic achievement. Okay, then we move on to the inc inconsistencies in the mindset interventions. Um, in um, meta-analyses and also in other study, um, there, there uh, are no replication of lasting results in uh, mindset interventions. So these mindset interventions weren't um, helping for adolescents or typical students or students facing situational challenges such as transitioning from primary school to secondary school. Uh, so a large group of students do not benefit of mindset interventions. And if replications are found, then the effect sizes are often very small um, or only relevant for high risk students. For example, um, educationally high risk students or with a um, yeah, cultural background. Um, and finally, sometimes results are even found in opposite direction. So as I mentioned, in the previous slide is that sometimes it's found that uh, when students are primed to have a fixed mindset and work hard, um, that they can even outperform growth mindset, growth mindset students. So um, there are a lot of inconsistencies going on in the literature and possible explanations is that the data is just too complex for this simplified model. Um, I think we can safely say that. Um, and there is also very high heterogeneity within and between samples. So knowing all these inconsistencies, um, we we're wondering, is it even realistic to just focus on these two ends of extremes of the mindset continuum? And keep can we keep using uh, mindset in this simplistic way? And why do we even use all these constructs separately? Um, before I will answer that question, I want to uh, show you two analytical approaches. 
And the first one you may uh, be very familiar with is a variable centered approach. And that's a theory driven approach. So it focuses on what is found in the literature um, and then tests whether uh, two variables are linked. So for example, does mindset um, as described in the literature influence uh, academic achievement? However, there is also a person oriented approach and that's more data driven. And the focus of this approach is to uh, assign participants to a profile or a group based on multiple constructs um, that are in a questionnaire, for example. And the advantage of this approach is that it can reveal like hidden subgroups. Um, so subgroups that are in the theory mixed together, uh, but have very opposite um, uh, yeah, results so that it, it can mask the effect in this variable centered approach. So when we know these two approaches, you can see that they are very complementary um, and should be used more often um, side by side instead of focusing on only a variable centered approach. Um, so I want to tell you uh, something about the current study and the goal of our current study was to define different profiles based on multiple mindset related constructs in a person oriented approach. And therefore we tested 724 uh, first year secondary school students in the Netherlands um, with a mean age of almost 13 years old and almost 50 50 uh, percent male, female. Um, and we use this uh, person oriented approach and latent profile analyses and um, included several self um, uh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't come up with the word, but uh, the questionnaires they had to fill in themselves. <laughs> Um, and the first one was the mindset questionnaire, the theory of intelligence. Also, they answered uh, questions about their achievement goals, their effort reliefs and their academic motivation. So for both the theory of intelligence and the effort beliefs, a total score was computed. Um, so for the theory of intelligence, the uh, fixed mindset, <laughs> so fixed mindset items were reversed scored and added to uh, the growth mindset items. And for effort beliefs, the negative effort beliefs were reversed scored um, and added to the positive effort beliefs. Um, for the achievement goals, I focused on mastery goals and performance goals in the previous slides. Uh, but we actually use a two by two model and uh, this two by two model also added uh, like a valence of mastery and performance and this valence component consists of approach or uh, or and avoidance uh, so we have a mastery approach goal mastery avoidance goal performance approach goal and performance avoidance goal um, and finally, the, the academic motivation uh, consists of four subscales and we group them two by two. So the uh, two above uh, subgroups form the controlled motivation um, and the two below uh, the autonomous motivation. Okay. The pre preliminary results, uh, we first focus on the verification of the factor structure and after deleting one item of the positive effort beliefs, we had an acceptable model and uh, we used that to do the latent profile analyses. So we looked at statistical measures, uh, the elbow point of the plots and the theoretical interpretability of the profiles. Um, we tested two to six different uh, profiles and uh, we eventually came up with a four profile solution. 
Um, but before I show you that, I just want to quickly switch back to um, the uh, theory driven, uh, the, the things that the literature say. Um, just a little recap. So the theory says that a growth mindset uh, is related to mastery goals, positive effort beliefs, and autonomous or more intrinsic motivation. And a fixed mindset is related to performance goals, negative effort beliefs, and controlled motivation. Okay, then we can uh, look into the results. Uh, so first, I want to uh, focus your attention to the different uh, colors, different things we uh, put into this profile analysis. So uh, in the yellow, you will see the growth mindset. Um, and as you can see, there is a Z score axis, uh, which means that a positive Z score means uh, more prone towards uh, growth mindset and a negative Z score means more prone to a fixed mindset. In orange, we have the positive effort beliefs. So positive, positive Z score is positive effort beliefs and negative is negative. Um, in blue, we have the goal orientation. And in the lighter blue colors, we see the performance goals and the darker blue, the mastery goals. And in green, we see in the light green and the uh, controlled motivation, so the more extrinsic motivation. And in the darker green, the more um, autonomous or intrinsic motivation. Okay. So uh, the first profile we found was uh, a subgroup that we named performance focused uh, group. And what we see is that they um, are more prone towards a fixed mindset and negative effort beliefs uh, and um, yeah, performance goals and controlled motivation. So more the external stimuli uh, of motivating themselves and uh, do yeah, like less <laughs> the mastery approach uh, goals and the autonomous motivation. The second profile we found, uh, we named the performance at first group. Um, these students are more prone towards growth mindset, positive effort beliefs and mastery approach goals, um, but are clearly, um, yeah, don't like or have an aversion towards the performance goals uh, even the mastery avoidance schools and uh, controlled motivation. The third profile we found was a disengaged group. And this group was, um, yeah, didn't agree with any of, of the motivational uh, cues. So they had, are way more prone to a fixed mindset, more prone towards negative effort beliefs, and um, yeah, didn't like to adopt any of the learning goals or both of the uh, types of motivation. And the final subgroup we found was a growth competitive group. So they have like the, uh, um, yeah, are very growth focused, um, but also adopting the performance uh, approach goals and using the external stimuli as well uh, to learn. So uh, you can also see the sizes of the different profiles in here. And for now, I want to move to the discussion. Um, so as I said before, I had, we are still in the middle of this uh, research, uh, so this is all I can show you. Um, but what we do find is that these four profiles are fairly similar to the profiles found in recent literature. Um, and that's quite exceptional because critics usually say, well, um, a person oriented approach, that's nice, but you cannot replicate the findings. 
Um, but in the same age group in the study of you and McLellan, we found uh, yeah, quite similar profiles. So that's very interesting and may suggest that this is, uh, these profiles might be robust even across countries. Um, what was inter interesting is that, there, that we didn't find a typical growth mindset group. So we did find the performance performance at first group, um, which had like a slightly, uh, yeah, more focused on the mastery and growth uh, component, um, but their aversion towards performance uh, goals or uh, extrinsic motivation was way more clear. So it, yeah, we, we believe that this is a different subgroup than the typical growth mindset uh, profile. Um, then we have the growth competitive cro profile, and that was the largest group, um, even just by a few students. But uh, the, the study of you and McLellan showed that this subgroup, the growth competitive subgroup, outperformed all the other students on their academic achievements. So we may conclude that this subgroup um, just uses all the possible uh, yeah, ways to learn and to motivate themselves um, and to improve their academic achievement and that this is a very adaptive way of learning. So it's quite reassuring that quite a large group of students do use an adaptive way uh, of learning. Um, then the disengaged group was by far the smallest group uh, in our study. And also in Ewick and McLellan, uh, they found this disengaged group um, and was also the smallest group in this study. Um, yeah, we think that this might be a high risk subgroup because they do not want to engage in learning in any way. Um, however, uh, this subgroup was, wasn't that detrimental in the study of you and McLellan. So another possibility is that these students might be very good at school, but are just not, uh, yeah, motivated because they are bored, for example. Um, but we have to figure out for our own study whether uh, this subgroup is a high-risk subgroup or not. So our suggestions for future uh, mindset research is that they uh, would try to replicate these different mindset profiles in secondary school students to see whether the, these profiles are actually ro robust, robust <laughs> profiles. Um, and also uh, focus on developing interventions to help specifically high-risk students to fulfill their full academic potential and enjoy learning. Um, because we see from the mindset interventions that these interventions do not really work for the general population. Okay, so to conclude, um, the profiles are probably, possibly uh, robust in secondary school students, even across countries. Uh, but most importantly, mindset is way more complex than just growth or fixed. Um, and our future plans for this uh, study is to examine the effects of these profiles on academic achievement and academic well-being, and also examine differences in the person-oriented approach versus the variable-centered approach. Um, so does the person-oriented approach, for example, better predict students' academic uh, achievements or well-being than this variable-centered approach? And hopefully also help identify high-risk subgroups um, if they are uh, present. So thank you very much for your attention. 
Um, and let me know if there's time for any questions and if there are any questions. But thank you for listening.